Welcome, everybody. Um, before we start, does anyone have any additions to the agenda that they would like to make at this time? Mason. Uh, yes, I like uh, about uh, conflict of interest. I did speak with Patty earlier before the meeting, but I did have another question in relation to that. And also with civil authority, I was wondering about some updates on that. Okay. Hey, Marv. Do you have anything you want to add to the agenda? Are we already open? Yep. Yep. You just made it on time. You didn't oh miss. God. You didn't miss anything. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I'd like to make a statement tonight about the roads. All right. Only a statement. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to add on the agenda an update on the ongoing um, legal dispute over Pine Gap Road. All right. And so we have <clears throat> posted this agenda in at least three places, right? And on the website, and emailed interested parties so we can move forward on this. And I'm going to start with the minutes from um, the last meeting on July 8th. And I didn't see any corrections on that, so I'd move to approve these as typed up. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thanks for you. <clears throat> and we have, um, we um, had a request for, um, to move something ahead on the schedule because people have got to be at work and so we're going to just um, jump right into that and that was about the uh, liquor license inquiry about I guess it's not the license inquiry so much as a um, question about timing is the person that brought that complaint here no no all right then um, you want to hang around a little bit longer in case he does show up? I guess he did know that this is a meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, we can talk about it without him here, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, th yeah. You know, we're trying our best. You know, a lot of times, well, actually somebody called and complained about the noise after midnight. And one of the neighbors had come in and said, hey, there's people screaming. Uh, you know, the park, people don't realize, a lot of the times, it's not people coming from our establishment. Mm. They call on Tuesday and they say, there's somebody drunk laying in the park yelling. And I'm like, we haven't been <laughs> open all day. You know, and then we had a couple fighting, but they weren't in our establishment. They were in the park on the corner. So a neighbor came in and said, hey, you know, there's a lot of going, just screaming and yelling after midnight. And, you know, ever since the neighbor said something about it at 12 o'clock, which that's when we're not allowed to have liquor in in our lawn area, <clears throat> we close the doors and we have people come inside the pub because we're allowed to serve liquor till 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. We do our best. The music goes off. The lights go off. But we cannot control people that have left our establishment. I, a lot of the inn people do hang out on the lawn. And we, you know, Jim is our neighbor. He's right there. We never have had a problem. It's quiet all winter long. It's just July is our busiest month and people are crazy. That's yeah. all I'm going to say. We do our best to do control of the noise and respectful of our neighbors. And, you know, the alternative is what? for one month that these people are kind of crazy and we try and keep them quiet is to what close our doors and have it shut down and have the whole place just sit there and rot uh, you know <coughs> we're doing our best to keep it quiet there and cool. they should have seen some sort of improvement in the last three weeks because we're running out there going shh Get inside. Get inside. Yeah. You know, we're already there. So yeah. that's all I'm going to say. Well, just, yeah, I guess thank you for your attention and, and being aware of it. And that's, um, I think it's um, summertime. You're right. It's, uh, it's you things just get loud. You can't control crazy yeah. people. No, you can't. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you really can. Just yeah. to, just to clarify, um, we yeah. didn't say um, that this is about Doc's Tavern and the Huntington House, just so not if, if yeah, every people Doc's don't Tavern, know. Yeah, really. Which is on the park and... and and people hang out on the park too. So, yeah. And this is the first year we've had expanded dining area out 
out on the lawn there. Yeah. There was always a few tables on the porch. Yeah. But now it's expanded out onto the lawn. So there's quite a few tables out there. Yeah. yeah. It's been busy. People love to it's hang out there. It's nice. Yeah. You know, it's like a family atmosphere. We have tons of family coming. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, a lot of this stuff that we've had to call the police at least five times, All right. you know, to come to these. It's just, it's just late night people that come in. And of course, we don't serve them. They're already drunk, mm -hmm. honestly. And we veer them away and they stomp their feet and get mad. And, and that's what happens. Yep. All right, well. Um, thank you for taking the time out of your your work. This is your work day right now, isn't yes, it? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. That uh, I said, Joey, I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, if um, if the person that was really brought this to the meeting shows up, then I guess we can summarize um, mm -hmm. what you said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. It's good to know you're aware of what's going on. Yeah, that's really, that's all wanted to bring it to a public forum just to encourage you to keep doing a good job. Yeah, yeah. we try. Yeah, we right. really try. It's not like when the eagle's nest was was there. That was really going to get pretty wild, yeah. Rochester <laughs> Inn. Yeah. Silver yeah. Tooth. Yeah. Silver Tooth. No. Yep. We've all experienced it. And it'll get cold and people will stop <laughs> hanging out outside soon enough. So, yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> We have, uh, Joan could not make it here tonight, but we do have some updates on what is going on with um, what most people are interested in and is um, Bethel Mountain Road. And we do not have it ready to sign today, but we're um, looking to uh, award the con contract to GW Tatro is the company. And we're um, gonna have that award ready for me to sign tomorrow and then Thursday morning is when we're going to have um, the um, contractor sign. Contractor sign, and they're assuming that they're going to want to start work immediately because the um, of the the time crunch of what's going on. And that also people should be aware is they have permission to work 24 hours a day. I doubt they're going to work three shifts, but more than likely um, two shifts, and probably on some Saturdays too. And I don't think anyone's going to be. Some um, we don't know. We they don't know. They have the right we to. We don't. They have They're the right to. Yeah. The yeah. House yeah. <laughs> it, it, you know, it. it <laughs> yeah. Okay. You're kidding. So you're going to be set for the next um, next couple months. You shouldn't have any problems because it's going to be noisy. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. at least we'll yeah. know. Yeah. Complaining about that or two yeah. 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 going by. It's you know we'll, we'll we'll see it's it's expensive they have you know it, it, you know I don't think they're going to want to be paying overtime to have people work if they have two crews it's already a big a big expenditure so but but um, we gave them permission to do what they need to do to get it done quick so no it might be a little lighter. Um, as soon as possible, we're signing with them Thursday morning. I wouldn't be surprised to see them mobilizing Thursday afternoon, but um, we'll, you know. Right, yeah. this is all about time. Yeah. 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 What was the bid? 2.2 million. 2.2, yeah, 270 something. Yeah. I have it written down. Um, yeah. It, I we have got a quick question. Yes. Um, I'm trying to get the, the timing here. You're, if I, you're uh, expecting to award the bid to GW Tatro. You plan to sign the agreement the next day, tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. And what was the other thing we're signing on Thursday? And then um, the, contract the contractor will, will come in on Thursday and, and sign. Yeah. Where, where are they from? Hey, do you know where they're from? I think they're up north somewhere. I think they have also done work in this town in the mm -hmm. past as yeah. well. Yeah. I think so too. They're, They're statewide. They've been inquiring They're about statewide. rooms and mm -hmm. staying mm -hmm. for a bit of time. Yeah. So, so we had four bits. You say that you you expect to be starting to work yeah. soon or in the you know immediately as soon as possible. Yeah, like immediately probably. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Uh, urgency is of course on our side. And is there any urgency on their side? Complete the period that we have. Site two? 
no no he's saying is there any urgency on their side to to complete it um the penalty if they don't i mean there is there is it's always late and over budget there there are not while i'm in charge <laughs> <laughs> I, it's unclear exactly what there were some what were the uh, no there, there, there are there contingencies there are they, contingencies they could run over but they yeah. could not over budget but over time um, the key is really trying to get it paved before winter August 11th is there yeah. yeah. so but we've we can date. work beyond August October 11th, 11th. actually no, October, 11th. October 11th yeah but there, it's also um, in their interest to wrap it up before winter and not have to then remobilize in the spring. You yeah. know, it's right. it, it just makes it more expensive for them also to, to do that. So, it's, mm -hmm. have they really done anything on the road? I haven't been up there, but cut back, engineering cut back right, uh, the right away trees yep. off of the right away, and they did. Um, Core samples, yep. yeah. Core testing. samples to find out where the real ledge is under the mm -hmm. roads. The surveying had to take place, and then the rest of it was all in engineering. Right. So no, not physically, not really. Not no, really. But okay. Pa the paperwork's all in order now. It's the muscle comes in. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the upper part of Bethel Mountain Road, which is Site Two. Um, Dubois King is working on the right-of-way plans uh, for 13 plus or minus properties that are involved with that work and um, they're working on preparing the specs and bid documents so we don't have a projected date for that bidding yet but it's um it's in the process for that um, and that will be done by the same company or? Uh, nope, that's a separate separate project, separate you know bid project could be, but um, you know we'll see. We don't know. Yeah, mm -hmm. there are two separate you know. That, that shouldn't take so long. No, it shouldn't take so long. That's not such a big deal. Yeah, yeah, but it is part of the the work that's covered under the emergency highway aid. In terms of the FEMA projects around, I guess you you're having a call on Thursday to get more updated with that. Um, and then they're going to do another site visit in a couple of weeks. Um, do you have any input on that, Cooter, with what um, the FEMA projects or just? Well, we finished a couple of little ones ourselves. Yeah. I rented excavators and some other equipment to put them in there. Um, yeah. And some that are not. Yep. Good. So that's moving along. Um, in terms of the bingo road repairs, um, we've submitted a public use permit application with the, the Forest Service, and they're going to be meeting with um, Cooter and Joan will be meeting with Chris Matrick and other Forest Service staff on Wednesday, looking at both temporary and permanent repair options. Um, and there is a possibility of applying for a VTRANS emergency grant for the temporary repair. Uh, and we're, um, of course, open to the Forest Service um, contributing funding to what extent that they can. Yeah, so that's really what Joan has been up to, which is um, a lot. So that's, uh, that's her report. We got um, those there. Um, any other highway news, or is that pretty much the highlights? All right, all right. Good. And um, and Terry, did you have any? Um, I see you finally got the the hydrant in done by the P line. Yeah, we didn't have enough time to change the other one, but we'll get it done this week. Yep. And I'm planning on washing them either probably either this Sunday or next Sunday. Depends on what the guys. We have meat tomorrow morning, so we'll decide then. I got I got one question for you, Terry. Well, I noticed on an invoice that you have rented a test pump. Yeah. What was that for? For the deep wells. 
you have to pump them all the way down. And okay. You have to take samples. Right. So I pump them down the day before and pump them dry, as dry as I can. Okay. And then the next day you got to do the same thing, and then you got to draw samples. We used to try doing them with Baylor, but they're 70 feet down, so the Baylor only holds half a point. So draw out five gallons, and then it takes you half a day. Okay. And I priced one now, and they want $4,500, so it's a lot cheaper to rent it twice a year. So that's it? Yeah. yeah. Summertime, nobody's here. Well, do you have anything to contribute from the library? This type of programs are going on. We have several more coming up. Mm -hmm. Like what? <laughs> check out the bulletin boards. Okay, check out the bulletin boards. All right. I've seen them all the time. Or the Herald, because she sends it to the Herald. All right, all right. Um, I was wondering about the Mueller report coming up. I thought that was interesting. Mm -hmm. That's this Thursday, I think. Is the Mueller report on this Thursday? Oh, we did the Mueller so report. We did that one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we did that, yeah. Yeah, So we were um, kind of talking a lot about roads. Marv, you had a statement you wanted to make about roads. Yes, I would like to uh, make a statement about history and future. And that is to this select board and future select boards. Since uh, in the last 20 years, there have been two attempts to close a section of Marshbrook Road from Robert Finkel, if I don't know the number, down to the bridge of the Marshbrook and so forth. They put a coal sack in, in both places. However, I, as an advocate, suggested that was a maybe an important road not to discontinue and so forth. And the select board did see my views since I did bring uh, Mike Bourne, a farmer that has a farm on the top of Marsbrook Road and one on Route 100. And that was a connecting point for him. Then secondly, another board wanted to discontinue that same section because of a washout, of course, and it was going to cost too much to, to rebuild, that uh, I was on the board at that time, not an advocate, but of course I had a real conflict of interest. Now I think this emergency has really shown that we need to look at what can happen with any connecting roads, and that is for the future, and I'm only talking, I don't know what's going to happen. The past I can relate to, but the future we've got to look at. And discontinuous of roads is very important. I was 14 years old when some of these roads that are in contest right now was discontinued. And so now there's a contest. Anyway, I'm just suggesting there's got to be a lot of mind uh, thought put into uh, the discontinuance of a road. Even though it goes to a trail or class four road, it doesn't mean that it can't be retained. And that's the important thing. Mm -hmm. We hear that, where were you? So your point is just, just like we experienced after Irene is that when a road goes down, it's nice right. to have some options. Yeah. Yeah, you know. And I want to say thank you to those select boards. Yeah. Okay. All right, um, Mason, you had something you want to say about the conflict of interest in civil authority? Yeah, um, uh, let's see, the meeting, the 24th, tw uh, the 8th, I didn't get a chance to look at the minutes. Did you record uh, mm -hmm. actually the date of signing the uh, the conflict of interest policy? It's not in the minutes. In the minutes? It's not in the minutes. I Is that correct? don't have that memorized, but I would have to look it up. I don't know if the minutes say the actual it's date. It's on the agenda. I thought it should be in the minutes. Yeah. I put it on okay, the I'm just suggesting that if it isn't, maybe tonight you might want to, to put it in tonight's minutes that you signed it on the 24th. That's a policy. 
we have to see when we did. We had discussion yeah. at our last meeting about right. that, well, but there yeah. was no definitive answer about when, because yeah. we thought we signed it in April. You signed it on the 24th of June. Okay. Okay. June. It was signed on the 24th of June. All right. So, so. I, just, I just were looking for clarity that it might be good to be put in the minutes. If it was right. done in public, now it is. if it was done in public and not in executive session. It wasn't executive. It wasn't executive session. That's what I understood. That's what right. Tom shared with me. So I'm just saying that for everybody's benefit, it might be good to make sure it's in the minutes. Well, so that we'll put them in there. But right uh, yes, but I, Patty spoke with me earlier, uh, and it was great because like having an understanding that back in 2000 when Marv was on the board that a uh, the first policy of conflict of interest was put together and it was revised once after that and then this new one which is actually a model from the Vermont Leagues of Cities and Town mm -hmm. is basically what we were functioning under uh, yes. I mean it's pretty darn close pretty close yeah right right Okay, you know, I just wanted to share that I thought it was a good mm -hmm. civil authority. I was hoping you, you might be able to give an update. I understand that the civil authority uh, hasn't had proper minutes that's been recorded, or I, maybe you can give us an update on where that is. And a lot of this is, you know, building up to the next election to make sure we're actually functioning as well as we should be for elections. So. Yeah, I don't know if you can so do you that know, yet, but, but I'm, I'm just not sure what you're referring yeah. to in terms Minutes of what are always taken. Yeah, the civil authorities meet. Yeah. The, yeah. the minutes are in the book. Yeah. yeah. There is a book and there are minutes. Well, yeah. it's not yeah. its own book. It's yes. in a book. Um, yeah. yeah. Are there is there some that you're you were looking for that you couldn't no, find or something? I'm just okay. Just hearing all those just talking about the civil authority mm -hmm. and how. You know, are we set up to really function for the next election in, in a good manner? Since mm -hmm. we did have some disturbances in the last election process. Thank you. All right. So um, let me see where we're at here. We've got um, on a lighter note approval. Well, we have an application for use of the park. Thanks for coming in, you guys. Um, for use of the park for a, a memorial for <coughs> Vernon Rocklin of Rochester, Vermont. And uh, Amy Braun is the one that um, applied for this, and it would be on July, oh, well, she's applied on July 9th. Okay, the, the event will be August 25th. And um, I move to second. approve? Yeah, yeah. Sure. it'll just be yeah. an hour long. Yeah, yeah not a, yeah, yeah. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's that one. And let's see, we've got, um, well, my, uh, my um, little bit of news is we, in terms of the ongoing litigation between Mason and the town over the existence of Pine Gap Road, he had appealed the select board's decision not to discontinue that road. And the, um, the, court has finally issued a decision on the town's motion for summary judgment and the intervener's motions for sub summary judgment. And basically the court has ruled in favor of the town on Mr. Wade's appeal of the select board's decision denying the petition for a discontinuance. That means that the select board decision stands. No part of Pine Gap Road is discontinued. And the court also ruled that Mr. Wade has admitted that the town Highway 29 is a public road uh, classified as a class four under 19 VSA section 302A4. And the court also ruled that, that Mr. Wade raised a genuine issue of material fact with re respect to whether the section of Pine Gap Road identified by Mr. Wade is part of town Highway 29. And the court has said that the evidence raises a question about whether Town Highway 29 does, in fact, traverse Mr. Wade's land on that section identified. And the court has granted him 30 days to amend his complaint to address these issues. So, anybody?
anybody have any questions about that? Um, I certainly couldn't take everything. You said, no. So I'm just wondering if I could see a copy of that. Sure. Or, um, sure. Maybe I, if I emailed Julie tomorrow, she might be able to send it to me. So you could have this one at the end of the meeting. Sure. Oh, okay. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. I'll give it right back to you. Yeah. I just wanted yeah. to do it. Okay. Right. Yeah. I know that's a mouthful. A couple <laughs> mouthfuls. Um, Harlan. How much we uh, into it? I was wondering why you haven't asked <laughs> that for a few months. Uh, I don't know. I was yeah. Give me a break. Yeah. Give me a break. <laughs> So at this point, it has cost the town $45,983.29. And if, if Mason did, um, decides to take advantage of the 30 days he's been offered to um, raise more questions, I'm sure that amount will go up. Yeah. And that would be a down payment on being able to take care of a road? It future. sure would, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, sure would. Yep. Well, you know. Yep. I'll know where this is going. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else have any questions about that? No? All right. Um, let me see. We got that. We got that. Um, we have uh, some of the, um, the budget printed out, some of where we're standing and where we're going with it. I haven't had a chance to study on that. Do you guys have any input on that? Not yet. No. It just, no. just came out. We, were, yeah. we postponed the Budget and Finance Committee meeting this last week because mm -hmm. we were nothing really to, um, more data to work on. Nothing yeah. to chew on. <laughs> yeah, nothing to chew on yet, but now we do. So I don't know if people know that, but every winter there's the budget and finance committee which the select board is part of gets together and starts hashing out what we're spending and what we need to spend and and trying to you know keep the uh, keep the taxes um, as reasonable as possible and our projects as reasonable as possible and this year the committee decided to try and keep meeting monthly throughout the year so when we come to that crunch time it's not quite such a big hurdle to to overcome so that's why um, that's why we have this stuff presented now and um, we're talking about it in July and not in January yeah. but I'm sure we'll talk about it in January too yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. and um, got any other questions Harlan uh, anybody find the books yet? <laughs> nope. Nope. Not anybody yet. Anybody peek? I haven't taken a peek at it. No. I've been um, maxed out. But I think the, the last person that has, seems to have seen it is Mason's lawyer. Yeah. Back in when Tony was representing him. But. But anyway, that's, um, I think that's what we've got tonight. And thank you all for coming. And uh, come again in a couple weeks, and we'll have more. Hopefully, we'll be here complaining about how loud it is and working on Bethel Mountain Road. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.